Hello there, I'm Matthew Simpson with the Cardboard Console, representing the UK Gaming Media Network. Today we are at the UK Games Expo. I'm with Martin from Black Box Game. Hello, how, how are, are you? you? I'm, I'm very well, how are you? Good, yeah, tired, yeah, but I thing, things have only just started, so... <laughs> yeah. So what's keeping you busy? What well, you I mean, Lords of War is our big game, it's our flagship title. Um, we just took delivery of the new expansion pack, which was funded on Kickstarter, Kickstarter campaign finished like two and a half weeks ago, so it's been a really, really fast turnaround to make sure we had it here today to show to people. Um, people are loving it so far, so that's really good news. Okay. But the nice thing is that we've got that kind of entry level, don't need the expansion stuff, so there's lots of new people, new families, new customers, which is one of the best things about us, uh, about the UK Games Expo for us. So tell us a bit about Lords of War. What so it's, it? a, it's a strategy card game. Um, we're beautifully illustrated by a guy called Steve Cox, who back in the day used to work for Cosgrove Hall, did things like uh, Count Ducula, Danger Mouse, awesome. that kind awesome. of stuff. It has a really British English look, which is something we work really hard for as an independent English publisher. Yep. Um, although, you know, not it's kind of interesting. A lot of people expect the kind of Magic the Gathering, super airbrushed, kind of yep. almost yep. real look, and we've gone for a kind of almost 80s violent cartoon look so yeah Which anyway it's the best form of cartoon thank you thank you um so yeah so that's kind of the look of the game in terms of how it functions uh every card has a defense yep. that defense has to be exceeded your cards on their corners and edges have a series of different attack values so different okay. numbers so depending on where you place cards they deal damage in different ways um and also the different unit types within the game behave in different ways so if you've got a berserker unit and it successfully eliminates somebody, knocks them off the board, that Berserker will then move into the position that that card was previously in. Theoretically, then it can murder something else, and onwards True and onwards. Berserker fashion. Yeah, indeed. So we won the UK Games Expo uh, Best Strategic Card Game Award in 2013. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And we're back again this year, nominated for Best Expansion Pack. Oh. So, fingers crossed. Just polishing your, uh, your trophy cabinet. Well, be nice to have another one it would be really nice because you know as a, as a small company like nick and i who run the business we both work in education full time so he's right. a chemistry teacher um i work at, in a school admissions department right. um so you know the company's run in the evening and in the last two years since we started the company we've expanded into 20 different countries yeah sold nearly 30,000 copies of the game. I mean, so, massive kudos to you guys, because it's a, a part-time job, and yeah. we actually saw Lords of War two years ago. Yeah, sure. Um, at the expo, and seeing it like today. Blossom and bloom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's Maybe. looking good, isn't it? Like, the booth is rammed, so which is really great to see, but it's just the amount of product that we've managed to, to kind of create. We didn't expect it to grow quite as much as it has done. Right. Um, in a way, we thought we'd like release a few packs and then start releasing different games. Okay. But there's, there's been so much demand for more Lords of War that we've just had to go, right, all other projects to the back burner. So the end goal was not really to have Lords of War go on for this long? Well, well, we kind of wanted to have it burbling away, but we wanted to have a few other games out, if you yeah. see what I mean. As it is, we are becoming the Lords of War company, which is fine. I'm yeah. totally fine by that, because <laughs> we, we love the game and we'll keep playing it till the cows come home. Um, we just kind of didn't expect it to go quite as big as it as it went quite yeah. so quickly. I mean, that's great. It's absolutely fantastic. I, mean, I own a copy myself. Oh, thank you, thank say. you. Awesome. You've mentioned the new expansion. Yeah, that's what right. Is, what is that? So the new expansion packs. Um, we had the first one, which we kickstarted last sort of autumn, yeah. and delivered earlier this year, and then we just kickstarted the next expansion. So the first one, the first expansion was for Orcs versus Dwarves. Yeah. And the second one was for Elves versus Lizard Men. We're planning to do the Templars versus Undead expansion campaign later this year. Cool. Um, and in terms of what the expansions offer, they increase your deck size by about 50%. Um, they add all types of new units into existing ranks, but they also add new rules into the game and new card types. So now you've got flying units, which can only be targeted by rangers or mages oh, okay. or cool. other flying units. Uh, monstrous creatures, which don't take damage from low level attacks. So they might have like a monstrous value. <laughs> of three, so anything that does three, two, or one doesn't touch them. Okay. Yeah, so you've got to be using your heavy hitters to take down your monsters. <clears throat> and then you've got mages as well. 
So each faction has two different spells they can cast, which are cast as tokens. Right. Um, and so for the dwarves, for example, they can give their guys an ice shield, give them extra defense. And for the lizard men, they can poison their enemies. Yeah. Um, and then there are sometimes secondary effects to those spells. So if a poisoned enemy dies, then that poison will spread through all their attack arrows onto all allies, basically. Oh, okay. So that can set off a chain reaction, theoretically, as wow. it goes. So there's quite a lot that comes with the Magic and Monsters expansion pack. Also, Templars vs. Undead, which is the, the third core game, yeah. we introduced moving units into the game. Yeah. And the expansion packs also scale in moving units to Orcs, Dwarves, Elves, Lizardmen. Oh. And we'll add a few more chunky moving units to the Templars Undead, provided we fund when we manage to get ourselves I'm in gear. I'm pretty sure you will. <laughs> well, thanks very much. It sounds like you guys have been very busy. Um, yeah. <laughs> one more question for me personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of the decks, can you uh, integrate the two, because you said like, orcs versus dwarfs, can you actually have an orc dwarf army versus a... Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the way that the game's built is there's a ranking system within it. So you have one general, but then in the in the base game, five commanders. Yeah. Now they, they all have that commander rank icon on. Yeah. So you can then strip out from the dwarves the commanders you don't like, add in, say, a bunch of orcs that you do. Yeah. Or potentially across the six armies, smush them all in together, if you see what I mean. And that continues down to the road. Try ranks. and get some real synergy in your deck. Absolutely. So it plays how you want it to play. Now you're always gonna have like a long tail to your army in the sense there's always gonna be a lot of fairly weak units. Uh, but it's what they do and whether that works how you play the game, if you yeah. see what I mean. So we've actually got a really exciting tournament tomorrow, yeah. um, which is now fully booked, which are very, yeah, it's awesome. Well, no, I mean, we, we can sell more tickets. Yeah, we're right. kind of overselling it, so oh, please okay. join us tomorrow. Um, but yeah, and, and with that, people will be building their own, we call them mercenary decks, where they kind of smush everything together and, and make the army that they want to play. I feel like I'd get butchered pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the cool things is we've got, because we have a few different schools that are now playing Lords of War as an after school club, as well as, you know, kind of grown up <laughs> gaming clubs. Um, and so we actually have a school bus of kids who are coming to take part in our tournament as like a half term school trip that, that their is, teachers organise. Thanks, man. So, yeah, I mean, we couldn't be more chuffed to have people from like their mid 60s right down to the kind of six years old and and to be kind of bubbling away and people enjoying it for lots of different reasons and at kind of different levels of ability if you see what i mean so yeah so edu on. educating kids on the battlefield as well as in the classroom yeah well, absolutely yeah, i mean teaching them to murder the right way <laughs> It, um, so, it, I mean, is there anything else? You, obviously, you, you, your booth seems really, really busy. Thanks. I assume that's going to all be Lords of War. Yeah, it's all Lords of War at the moment. So at the moment, we are artworking our second game, our first, second non-Lords of War game. Pray tell. Yeah, well, so it's another card game. Okay. Uh, it's designed for two to five. Um, we've also got it working at six. It's okay, but it just kind of extends the game length. So it's a bit of a debate internally between Nick and I and some of the other people who work on the team. Should we make it longer or do we want to keep it nice and tight and fun? Um, it's not mathsy. <laughs> Unlike Lords of War, which has turned out to be quite quite mathsy. Uh, although, if you can count to ten, you can play Lords You're of War. Right, so yeah. it's, it's okay. I struggle sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But it's basically a kind of trumping game featuring uh, all those classic horror races. So you've got werewolves, vampires, vampire hunters, uh, druids, all that kind of stuff. And you're all competing to take Politicians. over. Politicians? Sorry? Politicians? Yeah. <laughs> no, we haven't, but maybe a stretch goal for the Kickstarter <laughs> campaign. A true horror show. Um, and basically you're battling for, for domination of little towns and villages and trying to exploit the villages to increase your power. But it's a really quick, really quick game. It's, it's, it's faster than Lords of War, okay. but, but quite a strategic game at the same time. So the, the big debate at the moment is the title, because everybody has a different view on what we should be calling this thing. Okay. So I think what we're going to do in the end is probably whittle it down and then just Thunderdome. Everybody's going to fight. And, yeah. the, and the last person standing gets to name it. Good call. Yeah. That's typically how we do it on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, Martin, it's thank been you a, very much. Man, it's been a pleasure. I hope you have a really great expo. Yeah, you too. Good luck. And swing by the booth. We should play some cards. Definitely. Awesome. <laughs> All right, cheers.